Okay, darlings, now on to intermediate construction. Let's see if we can learn a little bit more about building some better, beautiful spacecrafts. Hello again. Glad do you could come back. To get started, go ahead and enter the VAB, and I'll give you the overview of what we're building today. Ah, uh, here we are again. Now to business. If you remember, in our last construction tutorial, we covered how to build a simple hopper and some of the basics of the construction area. In this tutorial, we'll expand your knowledge of some of the more useful features in the VAB, and we'll also build a more complex craft that will be able to get us out of the atmosphere. To build our new design, let's start with a craft we built in the basic construction, though this one is just called Hopper. This will save us a little bit of time, and the accounting department is always happy when we save on time. So, in order to open these, we just go up here. Okay. So open, hopper, and load. Good enough. Okay. What else do you want me to do? Load hopper, then remove its flea motor. Okay, you want me to remove that then. And go ahead and get on with this. First off, let's change the name of your craft and the description if you want. So that we still have our trash can special for later on. Okay. So we're going to change this to Metatons Hot Legs. <laughs> Darling, they're so hot. Legs so hot. For this craft, we are going to give a ship some additional purpose by attaching a science experiment. We can run these experiments during our travels and get valuable science data for Kerbal Kind. There are a number of science experiments to be performed, but at the moment we only have the Mystery Goo Containment Unit available. Switch to the Science tab to look at it. Okay, science, darlings, where do we find science? Science, 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 science. Here we go. Mystery Goo Containment Unit. This is one of the more basic scientific experiments Kerbal scientists have devised, and one of the first things they want to try and understand better. I mean, they don't even know what color the goo is. Okay, so when you pick up the part, you will see that it's designed to attach to the side of other parts, i.e. radially. If we attach only one of these, then during the flight, our craft will be unbalanced. One way to solve this is to add an extra goo container on the opposite side of the rocket so they balance. Luckily, we have a symmetry tool to help here. Okay, so these buttons control symmetry, highlighted, and the angle snap and can be found in the lower left of the screen. Press the Symmetry button, or press X key, and cycle through the most available symmetry modes. So, that'd be this one, right? Set it to 2x, and then pick up and place a Mystery Goo Containment Unit. This would be what? Two? I'm guessing that's two of them. Right? Okay, good. You will notice that the second one has been placed on the opposite side of the first one by the symmetry tool. If you haven't already placed a lone canister, pick it up, make sure the symmetry is set correctly, and place it again so that it has a duplicate on the other side. If we add too many more parts here, the craft we are making will be too heavy to survive re-entry safely, and too heavy to be slowed by our parachute, leading to sudden impact syndrome. So we will need to add a decoupler below the pod. Decouplers can be found in the Structural tab. Okay, Structural, Decoupler, okay. The decouplers can be found in the Structural tab, and will let us split the craft when we no longer need the lower parts. We won't be able to recover the discarded parts, but at least our craft and our Kerbal will survive re-entry and landing. Decouplers can be used in many ways, but for now, let's just add one of these to the bottom of the pot. Go to the Structural tab, and add, grab a TR-18A and place it. Well done. You'll recall, I hope, that in the previous tutorial we had to adjust the staging stack when we added the engine to our earlier rocket. When you've added a decoupler, the extra stage is automatically added to the stack so that any new parts below the decoupler won't be staged at the same time as those above it. You can, of course, still move these all around, but hopefully this will save you some time as you go. But this time we are going to use a liquid propellant rocket engine. Like solid rocket motors, these engines don't carry their own propellants with them. We'll need to add some fuel tanks. In the fuel tanks tab, we're still using these early parts, so there are only FLT-1000s available. Here. 
We're going to need five of these tanks to get us to space. Before you grab five tanks from the parts toolbox though, let me give you another tip. Because efficiency is my middle name. It goes right after Vaughn. Once you place the first tank on the rocket, you can duplicate that by holding the left alt key and clicking on the tank. Okay. Do this to the bottom tank a few times and quickly to get the five attached without having to go back to the toolbox. Okay, huh. Like that. Okay. Good! Switch over to the engines tab now. The swivel engine you see here is obviously different from the flea we used before. This is a liquid engine and it needs and burns both liquid fuel and oxidizer. Funnily enough, that's what we just added to the rocket. So let's add that. Changes, okay. Oh, interesting. You're almost there, and you're doing fine. Maybe not as speedily as someone of my caliber, though. Darling, you're just kind of a little bit full of yourself, aren't you? The last thing we're going to need to do is give this rocket a little better stability. So it keeps going all the way we want it to go. We'll achieve this by adding some fins near the bottom of the rocket. Fins can be found in the aerodynamics tab. Okay. Set the symmetry mode to 4x so that we place them on both axes. Also turn on angle snap. Okay, angle snap and 4x. Okay, so basic fin on the last rocket tank. You'll see the other three symmetry counterparts will be placed as well. Okay. So let's say about here. Okay. Excellent! We've now got a rocket that will let us reach for the stars. Admittedly, I did say reach 4 as this is a basic rocket which can't achieve orbit. But on the bright side, that means re-entry will also be basic. You've done a great job in building a basic... Okay, so is there anything else? Okay, well, going on then! And now, on to a little bit more advanced flight, shall we? Hello again! Glad you could make it back. Today we will take an exciting step, getting our first Kerbal into space, with a capital S! Hopefully you remember the controls we discussed in the basic flight tutorial, but don't forget that you can always press escape and click on the key bindings to remind you. You're ready, let's get started. Okay. Our mission today is to make a short suborbital, less than orbital, flight out over the waters to the east. Nice arcing path that ensures a gentle survivable re-entry. Straight up and then straight down is not so good for survival. Hmm. Interesting, I didn't know that. I have set up the pink target indicator on the nav ball as an aiming point, but do note that this is not the case for normal missions. The target marker is normally used for other things and does not help with ascents. Starting with the nose pointing straight up on the launch pad, or 90 degrees elevation from the eastern horizon. Built to east, 80 degrees elevation on the nav ball by 150 milliseconds. That's like a whole list of things to do. After burnout, coast up into space and have a look around. Prepare for re-entry. Lastly, re-enter and land safely. Once we reach burnout, run out of propellant, we'll have a bit more time to discuss some other things. Unlike the hopper in our first lesson, this new craft has liquid fuel engine. This means that we can use the throttle to set the output of the ship's engines. So here's the controls for the throttling. Left shift and lot of control, B and S, okay. SAS stands for Stability Augmentation System, although Kerbal astronauts usually refer to it as Sickness Avoidance Scheme. Whatever it stands for, what it does is try to stop the ship from spinning around using the computer controls, auto torque drive, okay. <laughs> this is a lot of stuff, darlings. Okay, this craft has a little too much engine, so we're going to throttle down for launch. Set your throttle for two-thirds, the upper of the two middle notches on the slider. Also, turn on SAS to help control things. It will keep you pointed where you want to be pointed. Okay, so let's bring it down to about here. And, and T. I thought that I couldn't turn it on until afterwards, but hey, okay. So that actually is going to kind of keep things good. That's interesting to see. During this lesson, some of the information is quite detailed and it can take a while to read. As this is a short suborbital hop, I don't want you to miss anything important. I will place a warning at the top of the pages when you might want to pause the game to read. Alright, enough talk. I'll unlock the rest of the flight controls and you'll be clear for launch. Okay. 
Ready, steady, and go! Wait for a bit more speed. Now the time to start tuning. Follow the marker to 80 degrees by the time you reach 150 meters. 80? Uh, okay, so you mean this way, right? Good work! Get ready to turn further once you reach 250 mils. Good, look, good. Now let's turn a little more. We are aiming to get to 70 degree pitch line. Uh, where's 70? Nope! Uh oh, you flipped out! Probably won't make it high enough. However, you could just restart the lesson. Ah, oh, there we go. It seemed to be good. Then burn straight up. Nope. Apparently not. Let's revert this flight. Okay, next and ready to launch. Okay. So, let's try this again. Now's the time to start turning. Follow this to 80 degrees. Right about here. Okay. Once I reach 250, okay. Now I gotta bring this down to 70, right? Okay, so just keep slightly edging it, slightly. Okay. Excellent work! You've got the rocket just where it needs in order to reach space. Be able to let SAS keep the craft steady for a while as we accelerate further. Now go ahead and throttle up to full power. Okay. We're really cooking along now. As we get up to these higher speeds, you might start to see some heat from the atmospheric friction. Okay, so we're gonna kind of just pause this for a second. Now that we're coasting our way to Apoapsis, that's the highest point in our current projected path, we've got a little time to chat. Once you clear the atmosphere, we'll go over what you can do in space. I think I need to kind of bring this back a little bit here. Okay. Can't really see the stars or anything. Darling, I am the first star in the sky. Just like you always knew. Okay, so, huh, that's a, that's a long way down. This is Kerbal. Always wondered what it would be like in space. Oh, hey, look. Now all the other stars are coming to join us. So, let's see. I've got to still kind of uh, adjust this a bit more because we're supposed to be a bit more over here. While we float up here beyond the atmosphere, I'll quickly tell you about a couple of things you can do. The Advanced Enough Astronaut Complex in the KSC we can train our Kerbal to be able to spacewalk, or EVA, although we won't be able to do that on this flight. Also, when we are carrying science devices like our goo container, we can perform experiments. Feel free to play with the goo canisters now by right-clicking on them. I'll let you know when it's time for the next phase of the suborbital flight. Okay, so... Right-clicking on them... So what, like this right here, huh? So, Mystery Goo Containment Unit. Observe it. Goo seems to have clumped into a sphere. It's also able to have become... It also appears to have become brittle. Okay. Okay, so according to this, I need to now move this way. So let's see. Turn off SAS. And turn it back. Nice! Now hold steady onto your new altitude, let SAS do its job. Get ready to decouple the stage and start re-entry. So how do I get rid of this? Uh, 
Uh, okay. Ah, it's time to get rid of that booster, since it's just weighing us down. Stage to discard the unneeded parts and mess. Let me kind of repoint this a little bit. Huh? There we go. Okay, now then, let's see. Okay, so now he wants us to stage the shoot. Okay. Okay. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, here we go. Right there. Whew. I almost lost control there, darlings. I forgot that I turned that thing off, uh, whatever it was. Okay, so... So that's how I actually keep my stuff from flying out all over the place. That's something that I kept doing all the last time. And let's let this baby go to the ground. So we gotta wait for about two kilometers. Oh, look at it. Leg so hot. I really light it up right now. I could cook an egg on them. And coming in for the kill, darlings. Ooh, look at the speed. Okay, so it wanted me to right click on that, I think it was. Right click. Make sure that's set to 1000. Okay, good. Right click. Do I deal with anything with that? Okay. Oh, I didn't mean for it to rip off. Well, oh well. Ah, shucks. Something went terribly wrong here. I want to try to stay alive on an actual mission, you know. I'll send someone to clean up and you can try again. Well, I think otherwise we mostly did a fantastic job. So, I think we're going to go ahead and leave it here. We'll come back for some more training on how to actually fly these things and hopefully not kill so many Kerbals. Unless they want to, because I'm sure as heck going to try. <laughs> so, in the meantime, thank you for going ahead and joining me here today. Well, so... Thank you all for joining me here today on this glorious little run-through of Kerbal Space Program, learning how to fly. If you like this, please remember to give it a like, give it a comment, and subscribe if you have not already. In the meantime, go ahead and raise your can of whatever you're drinking in the air, and have another one on Metaton, darling. Love and peace. Even... Pyrus... And... Undyed... I... You... I'll kill you! Oh. Uh, okay. Um... It's just an internal transformation. <laughs> Not exactly what I was expecting there. So... I guess let's check her out here. Attack of 64 and defense of 20. Dr. Alphys' greatest invention. This is herself. I never thought I'd have to...